In today's video, we'll be going over how to create this truncated dome. It's mostly an idea and an exercise on creating truncated subdivisions. And then here at the end, we do have the ability to play around with some of this and create more of a dynamic form. So um, I'll be going over all of the steps and let's jump right in. All right, so what I've done is I've created a sphere and subdivided it using isotrim. And what I'm going to do is pick one of those faces. So I'll go to list item. And I'll plug in all those surfaces into the list. And it's giving me one down here. So I'll actually bring in a slider 15 and pick one of the ones down here. Why? Because when we can, when we do it to one, we can do it to all of them. Now that we take this one, we're going to deconstruct this one into these lines that we can now get the midpoint of. So if we get the midpoint of these edges, we've technically truncated it now, which we have shortened the length between them. So now that we've done this, let's go to a polyline and plug in all of the vertices. And as you can see, we get all that line going through all those points except for that last segment. So let's right click on closed, set Boolean to true. This gives you that last segment as the closed uh, polyline. So now with this, we can easily now uh, do that again, right? So we can take this polyline, we can explode it. And we can get the midpoint and create a polyline. I'll copy this here and plug it in. Right, so this is truncated once and then twice. For now, let's delete this one. Let's play around with this one now. Here, if I actually graphed, it'll do it to all of them. And this is what actually creates a hexagonal grid. Let's bring this back. But as you can see, these segments are actually straight segments when these segments are actually round segments. So if we wanted to get them back on the sphere form, we would actually have to project them out. And so that's what we're going to do next is turn this into a true sphere, truncated sphere. So let's take Let's delete this. And what we're going to do is instead of grafting it, it's going to do it to one of them. And we can leave it like this, but I think it would be a good exercise to show you how to do that. So let's get the, out of this base, we're going to extract the midpoint with a perpendicular frame. For that, I like to use evaluate surface and the point is gonna be in the middle. So we need to take this face, plug it into the surface and re-parameterize. This way it converts this face into zero to one in both U and B and we can pick a point halfway. So when we do construct point and we locate it halfway in the X, Y, and Z from zero to one, we can pick the midpoint. And this midpoint creates a frame or a direction in which, or a normal in which we can project this polyline in. So let's go ahead and project onto a B rep. And we're going to use this base as our B rep, this polyline as our curve, and our normal as our direction. So as you can see, we've taken this straight section, turned it into a truncated rounded section. And now if we were to take all of these items 
and grab them, it will actually do it to all of them. And if we disable preview here, you see that we actually have a hexagonal grid that actually conforms to the perfect um, shape of the sphere. So with this being said, let's take this and use a multi-part. And this is only available in Rhino 7. So if you have Rhino 6, just use pipe or pipe variable. And then here, let's plug in the curve. And the trick that I've been doing is 1.500 and then multiply. And then I go 3.000. And I multiply them. And now 1.5 will go into. Stretch size. And the multiplication goes into node size and end offset. And now we can actually decrease the values a little bit because it will be a little bit. And we still have this back here that we can always bring back. These are going to be these spaces. So with these spaces, we can actually join here at join. Then we can do, we actually have to flatten the input here. So we have one close view up, and then we can do view up edges to export uh, extract the naked and interior edges. Now let's go here. Let's take this and do it for all of this up here by plugging in both naked and interior, which there's only going to be interior ones for uh, here. We can flatten this. Okay, now we can play around with some of the sizes of how those two interact between each other. So this is another way to kind of create another type of dynamic structure where you can actually have this becoming um, like the opening and closing, right? This, this value, uh, this number being tied to an attractor point this way it kind of swells up um, in some instances to like let more or less light in. It's actually a cool feature to, to have, but that's only available, like I said, with sub D multipipes. And uh, you could do it definitely with pipes or even doing sweep along curve. So this was a quick exercise. Hopefully you found it interesting. There are way more things that we can do with this. Uh, but like I said, it's mostly to show truncation and how you can take any pattern and actually shrink or create more subdivisions by shortening the length between each connection. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.